Yo, what it is everybody, thanks for tuning back into another episode here on the Speedbug channel. Y'all can see I'm in a different setting and stuff like that. I am in my new garage. I have not made many videos lately because Speedbug moved to his new location. We got out of the old place, not that I was forced out, but I was working and grinding real hard. Uh, you know, kind of just staying low key and stuff like that. Now I have everything always here at my house. I have all four of the cars, my truck, my trailer, all my motorcycles, everything. We on some land and stuff now. We got a couple acres and stuff like that. I'll make a, a tour about going, kind of going around the house and stuff like that just a little bit later on. Um, but I have neglected kind of doing that uh, and just kind of keeping you guys up to date and stuff like that. But this video here, I just had to kind of really bring it to you guys. Sorry I'm all dirty, a little bit out of breath, but I just kind of got done doing it. It's been hot as ball sacks here lately in Florida, as you can kind of see I'm outside. And uh, I'm going to go back inside because the sun is, woo! I mean, I love the heat, but it's even kind of hot for me. But anyway, we got both Corvettes here. We got Pikachu here on the left, and we got Snow White here on the right. And, ah, dang it. Y'all know, I, I didn't want to make this video. I don't like bashing people and stuff like that, but you had a chance to do something about it. And uh, I really can really give two shits kind of going forward how this company really feels about me or this video. But I'm gonna lay it out to you because y'all already know with the Ducatis and stuff like that, y'all didn't believe me when I bought the V4 and how I talked so much shit about it. When I spent all the money on the S1000 double R and said, if I hate this bike and fuck it, it's a piece of shit, I'm going to sell it. And I thought it was a piece of shit. And guess what I did? Sell it. Some of y'all thought I would just buy them for views and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Like I don't have better shit to do with my life, but buy something for views. That's why I have the shit behind me. But okay, whatever. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that another day. So you all know here is my race car. It's, the, you know, in, in, in disguise, but my race car, you know. It's, uh, I, I really race and, and whoop on this thing. You know, I, I really do with the blower, the meth, and everything like that. I really, really push this thing. I mean, it's fully built from top to bottom. I just keep it stock looking. And everyone that says, ah, that car doesn't have over a thousand this, that, I said, that's good. That's exactly what I want you to believe when you look at it because it doesn't look like it does. Um, hell, that, that's, that's the whole purpose here. And it does that very, very, very well and kicks ass very well. So you already know I bought this ZR1 front end, right? I got it from VicRes.com. Now, when I got the bumper, I was very skeptical because I hate aftermarket body parts, period. Now, the side skirts and shit like that, you know, which I have, they're actually the exact same ones made by ECS Composite, or, which are freaking stellar. Um... But bumpers and shit like that, nothing ever fits like OEM. You know, you get carbon fiber trunk lids and stuff like that. They're cool, but uh, not that I have one, but just, just know. Even the back cool one-off tail section that I have uh, here on uh, Snow White, yeah, it works, but the gaps and stuff, they're just never as good as OEM, and I still wouldn't do this one again either. Uh, so I did an aftermarket bumper once. I didn't like it, and it was pretty high quality, and... Uh, so so was this one and I took another gamble on it and it bit me in the ass now I got it actually up on the table and stuff here so you guys can point out and see and when I had this car Originally with the stock front end and this is important guys So pay attention because a lot of you guys asked me a lot about this and I'm gonna really go into depth and detail I had the car slammed right I had the car slammed about two and a half inches the ZR1 front end really drapes low and hangs down with the valances and stuff like that over here as it's supposed to it's supposed to provide extra downforce ground effects and stuff like that on the real zr1 uh, real zr1 and it does with you know with the winglets and stuff like that here's here's even the winglets that that go on the side now as far as the bumper cover itself well hold on let me go let's talk about the slam part i had to raise my car up before i get off track i had to raise the car up because it draped too low i literally couldn't get it in and out of my driveway i'm not kidding when the car was slammed the whole front end was maybe roughly about you know if i had to guess maybe about that far off the ground it was completely undrivable couldn't get it up the race ramps and the trailer and stuff like that now before you sit here and tell me ah you need thicker race ramps and this that whatever i have a four degree angle approach and they're 11 and a half feet long if you can't do that the car is meant for a show it's never 
never meant to move. It's just not worth it. I race the shit out of this car. I'm constantly at the racetrack, 160, 170 miles an hour at the quarter mile and stuff like that. And I slam on my brakes and you're gonna have nosedive from the brakes and stuff like that. This car does not have a parachute. So for people that wanna know how fast that is in a quarter mile, well, if you drag race, you already know how fast it is. This car is no bitch, okay? And I don't treat it like no bitch and it gets down and it boogies, okay? So when I slam on my brakes and stuff like that, this is the first problem. And this is after I raised the car back up to stock height. You could see right here. This is the second lip that I've had to do this on. You could see the, 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 uh, the brake so that it has rigidity and then boom, right? Second lip, first time I had to have it. Now before you say, oh, your car is this, you didn't have it installed, right? Look, man. I've taken bumpers and done this on Corvettes, Camaros, and everything a thousand times. When I put the bumper cover on itself, the bumper cover itself from Vicrez, and let me tell you, for an aftermarket bumper, it is exceptional. I think the bumper cover itself is great. The grill inserts, they're fair at best. These, the decals and stuff that I had painted black, fit perfect. As far as the lip itself, complete fucking garbage. It is absolutely garbage. It is flimsy and there's nothing that attaches it and holds it besides that. Yes, how you see that is and stuff like that, that is after taking it off four, five, six times and there's nothing that holds this bumper cover, I mean this front lip into the center of this besides trying to sandwich it in between there and obviously anybody that knows anything about cars, that's not gonna work. Now, I thought about making plates and stuff like that and trying to help it in and hold it together. But you know what? If you sell a complete kit at as much as this cost, it shouldn't. At the time that I purchased it, it was about 1200 bucks just for the, for the parts. Then you have to paint it. Then you have to really trim and cut up all of your cows and stuff like this. It is not a job that you want to take to a regular body shop and actually have them do it because nothing fits the way that it's intended to fit because it's not an OEM GM part. So you have to take, undo all of your clips, put the aftermarket clips on the bumper, trim this section here with the fender covers. My car is obviously supercharged with trans coolers and all kinds of other shit, so that was another problem, which was another reason I bought this front end specifically for the airflow. So here's my underguard to allow part of my inner cooler and my trans cooler to go. As you can see, this has had to all be hacked up too. And that is, I probably took that off and did that probably about, I don't know, if I had to guess, maybe 10 or 12 times to try and get it right, just to try and get it to suck down to the bumper. Having this car also raised up about two and a half inches, three inches is pretty much where you can see the wheel gap is right now. That's exactly where the car had to sit and the car scraped still over every single speed bump that I could imagine. So I'll go to the end of my driveway, I mean my garage here, and this lip here, if I had to say right here, I don't know, I'll put my foot down here so you could see it. It's not that tall. We're talking maybe an inch and a half, two inches best, scrapes going up in here too. So think about it before you actually wanna get this bumper cover itself because it really becomes a pain in the ass to drive this car. Now I did reach out to one member and he had it as well. And he made a plate to have his reinforced here at the bottom. Cause I'm gonna tell you, you're flying 150, 180 miles an hour for the ones that know this car. I've had this car over 220 miles an hour. You got 220 miles an hour going through the front end of some bumper cover and it's pushing down on this. Well, let's just say this isn't 220 mile per hour wind and look what this is. This is the exact same way it's fastened on the car. It looks badass, but that's it. That is literally it. There is no if, ands, or buts about it because there's nothing look underneath that grabs the front of this lip. So then you slam on the brakes if you're racing at the end of the drag strip. Keep in mind the drag strip is smooth and it still scrapes. So excuse me for getting heated a little bit but I'm heated because they had an opportunity to really correct this and fix this and they sure as hell didn't I called them I had to they said we don't make replacement parts for the lip and stuff like that I said what the hell is wrong with you people how you not remake the replacement nobody's really gonna probably mess up the bumper cover or the grills unless you get into an accident but people even Z regular Z06s and and Grand Sport owners and, Z and ZR, real ZR1 owners and shit like that, they're gonna fuck their lip up a thousand times because they hit a curb, 
they hit the garage this that whatever they have you know the, the flood rails and stuff what, whatever it is you're gonna screw it up nah we don't make it you got to buy a whole nother bumper kit but we're in the process of making a carbon fiber kit uh, for the lip that you know obviously carbon fiber the purpose of that is lightweight and strength carbon fiber is 10 times the strength of steel at one tenth of the weight well that was like six seven months ago they still haven't had it. then they gave me another excuse that covid was here and then production this that whatever look that ain't my problem okay get your shit together and don't sit here and try and sell me an entirely new kit again when i have to throw the bumper cover away throw the grills away throw the inserts away the camera dongles all of the hardware just to get another kit at 1200 bucks and then go have the joker repainted let me tell you said and done before anything ever happened for the people that want to know, when you factor in your undershield guard, your, excuse me, your wheel fender liners, both sides, if your car has, if it's supercharged or, or got oil coolers or extra market trans coolers, you need those as well. You need to trim your brake duct vents and stuff like that to have it all fit right. If you don't have cameras, you need to uh, apply the plugs and buy bungs and stuff like that. My car has the cameras. It is a 3LT. And to have a proper paint job where it's actually going to match can it be done for less than this amount that i'm going to tell you yes but it will never match and look the way that it does all said and done guys it cost me forty nine hundred dollars to change this front end over and i'm throwing this shit in the garbage i'm telling you there's no support you buy the bumper cover you better not mess it up because they're going to make you buy another kit if you're seeing this and you try and want to make it right, Vic Chris, I don't care. I don't want your shit anymore on my car. I am going back straight to OEM. I never had a problem with my OEM front end. I never had it come loose at 220 miles an hour. But yet I'm at the end of the drag strip at 170 and you can't even get your freaking front lips together or give me some other brace. I have to re-engineer it to make it and stuff like that. And I was about halfway through it and I said, you know what? I'm just paying $5,000 for a front end and stuff like that. I shouldn't have to do this. It should already be done. But that's the aftermarket. They appeal for the looks and stuff like that. It just ain't for me. So I'm throwing this shit in the garbage. I don't want it. It did line up correctly. Everything was good. But the front end and the front lip with the sturdiness that when you're vet, whether it be a Stingray or Z06 going down the street, I promise you if it's not at stock height, even if it is at stock height, and you're flying, your front end, I promise you, is coming off and is going to hit the ground. And you're going to be screwed because they're not going to resell you a front lip. When they told me that they were, they said they'd call me back. They never did. I had to call them back and uh, figure out what's going on. The person that was supposed to uh, place this order... Uh, I guess either ended up going with it, whatever. They couldn't sell me the front lip at the time. They either didn't have it in or this, that, whatever. Whatever. I didn't get the lip. Suppose it was like $300, but they were they could de decommission another set. That is absolutely bullshit. You shouldn't have to decommission a set. You should have these on staff and on hand. So it is what it is. It's coming off the car. So I just wanted to make everybody else aware of this because everybody sees the car. They say it looks great. Yes. It does look great. I spent a lot of money on the paint, but this shit is going in the garbage. It is not worth it. Do not buy it. The quality of it and the support. There's no, the quality is fair, but there's no support. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm rating this entire thing a 2. And they only get a 2 because it looks cool if you never drive the car. But do not put this bullshit on your car. You'll be completely and utterly upset the second you do anything with it. Done. So... That's my rant for the day. Uh, I will keep you guys posted on that. The new one will, will be here soon from GM. It's currently already getting painted. And I will introduce you and walk around the house and the garage or whatever. And uh, talk about some other few things coming up here on the channel soon. But do not buy this dumb shit app. It's all, I do not recommend it. And y'all are coming to this channel specifically because you know I keep it real. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna keep it real. If your shit sucks, I'm gonna tell you, your shit sucks. You stink, your garbage, your feet stink, can't read good, whatever it may be, I'm gonna keep it real. So that's really what it is and uh, peace out.